Well, hey guys, my name is JJ. I'm from Reality Survival Channel, and today I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, build and use a Dakota hole fire. Uh, then we'll we'll cook up some some combat ramen noodles on there, and uh, um, and then we'll be pretty much done. Um, the thing with the Dakota hole fire is, is uh, initially it was kind of designed um, for, I guess, like a combat type environment. It was adapted from the from the Indians um, and we taught it in the uh, US Air Force Survival School as a way to build a fire that you could cover over quickly in case the enemy was close and that also would leave very little evidence that you were there. So some of the things that you're going to need to do this um, a trowel or some kind of a little shovel helps. Uh, you could use an e-tool, you could use really anything you want to dig with, your knife or whatever, you know, a rock, a stick, whatever you want. I'm just going to use a little garden trowel. And then because it's a combat fire, of course, everybody who would uh, be in combat is going to have their uh, combat shama or shamag or however, whatever you want to say it. I think uh, where I came from, we just always called those a scarf. <laughs> but we, since special forces operators are now using the these these scarves, we have to call it uh, we have to call it a cool name, which is the shema, which I think is actually the Arabic word for scarf. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. So uh, what we're going to do here with the Dakota hole is we're going to dig a hole down, um, probably six to eight inches deep, and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five inches or so in diameter, and then uh, and then we're going to dig another kind of hole or trench into the side. The classic textbook way to do this is to dig another hole down and then over to supply it fire and then you cook over the big hole or to supply it air and you cook over the big hole. The other thing is placement. Um, if you were in a situation where you were trying to limit anybody seeing your uh, smoke or anything like that from a fire then you want to do something that has good overhead cover and that's why I'm kind of laying down here because I've got branches and stuff like that above me. I've got several uh, juniper trees all around here so that is uh, another consideration for, for building this. So with that, let's go ahead and get going. I'm gonna use this shema to actually put my dirt on. Uh, and that way when I cover this back over, I can just take and dump all the dirt back into there. And then you don't see that I've been disturbing the ground here. So that's the reason for having that. Now with the first one, Kind of what you do is kind of like you're cutting out a piece of sod or whatever. Probably gonna have a lot of roots here too, but that's the downside to digging underneath trees. All right, so I'm gonna take that first one, kind of use that as like the the plug on the top, and I'll put that back at the end. Alright, let me get this dug out and then I'll uh, catch you up and show you what I've got going. Okay guys, so here is a look at what we've got started. Basically just two different holes. This will be the main hole here and this will be the air hole. And now what I've got to do is I have to get these holes connected. And one of the things you could do is like if you've got a knife with like an awl on it or something along those lines, because you need something fairly small, you get down in there with your hand and you can kind of start to drill sideways over into the other hole. So that's how I'm going to connect those holes. Okay, so we got the holes dug and See if you guys can see this here. As you can see, we've got a tunnel going all the way through. And you know that tunnel is probably, oh I don't know, maybe um, maybe two and a half inches in diameter or something along those lines. So with that all I'm going to do is just get this cotton ball kind of ready to light. Just going to pull it out here like that. Taking a little EDC flashlight, or EDC lighter, start it up, place it down there in the middle. 
Now I did kind of place that off to one side because I'm going to be, uh, I'll show you here, I'm going to be placing the sticks at an angle so that I'm not smashing out the tinder. Those are kind of a, in disarray, but basically I'm going to be laying them over somewhat like this to start this out with. Now the downside to this is it's pretty slow because you have to, uh, you got to kind of feed these in as you go, which you know, makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So, well, luckily, fits pretty nicely right there on the hole as you can see you do still have some smoke Let's take a look at our fire before we put our noodles on As you can see, still going well. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple of sticks while we got it up. Little chunks is all you need, about four inches long. You really don't want them too long. So they'll stick up, get in the way. Okay guys, so now the water is uh, warming up and all I've got to do is just occasionally, um, you know, check the, uh, check the status of the flame, add some more fuel if I need to, and uh, I'll be good to go. Okay, so we got our uh, ramen noodles to a nice little boil there and now it's uh, lunchtime. Got me a couple of uh, chopsticks carved up here to uh, eat those noodles with. Hopefully that'll work out. Pour my little seasoning in. Okay, I'll let that cool for a second here. And uh, while I do that, I'll just kind of show you guys um, how to cover this over. Okay, so I got that about right. I'm just going to kind of cover that over a little bit. And then I would take the rest of this dirt. carry it with me and like I said I would just strategically dump it you know little bit by little bit in places where it's not going to matter now when we look at this from above as you can see there is very little evidence that there was a fire there now again like I said you've got to address the fuel that you got also um, you're gonna to have to take that with you too so there you go. I'm going to eat some lunch. Okay, guys, so that's been a look at the Dakota Hole Fire. Uh, basically, it's a good little fire if you're trying to uh, keep your signature down, you're trying to uh, keep your light discipline low and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, in a combat situation, you don't want to ever build a fire unless you absolutely have to, but um, if you did need to, this is one possible way to do it. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I definitely appreciate it when you sh if you share this with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to click the thumbs up button and put any comments in the uh, uh, comments down below and I'll be happy to try to answer them the best I can. 
Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe. Oh shit, that's hot. <laughs>